Hi, Randy K7AGE. I thought my next video was going to be how to hook up the mixer to my radio, but I've decided to do another video with a tip of how I deal with the audio cables going in and out of the rear of the radio. Let's see what that's all about. Many of the radios today offer an accessory connector on the rear of the radio, which provides pins for audio in, audio out, and push to talk, as well as maybe some other features depending on your radio. So the accessory connector many times is either a DIN or a mini DIN connector. Now these are small, they're 3 8 to a half inch in diameter, and they can have between 6 to 13 pins. Well 13 pins on one of these little connectors makes it really difficult to solder wires to. I'm going to show you the way I connect to these, which is much easier. So this is what a mini DIN plug looks like. It's, this one happens to have six pins. It's about three-eighths of an inch in diameter. And you can imagine trying to solder wires on the back side of this to be rather difficult. So here's a hint. Not, not what this video is about, but if you do choose to solder your own little mini DIN plugs, I recommend getting a mini DIN, a matching mini DIN socket. And before you start soldering, plug the, the plug in into the socket. So what this will do for you is that the um, plug plugged into the socket will help hold the pins in proper alignment while you solder them. The pins are just set in plastic and the heat from your soldering iron, if you're a little too slow or not fast enough, it can actually move the pins around and basically uh, you'll, you'll ruin the connector. So by having it all aligned, quick soldering, let it cool down and then unplug it will help maintain the pins in alignment. So what this video is about is the hint that I don't solder those little connectors. I buy a breakout cable. So what this is, is a cable that has a connector on one end, and on the other end it has a wire for each of the connectors. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. It has a foil shield that wraps all around the cable, as well as a shield drain wire that you can use for shielding and grounding. Now this makes it a lot easier. Because now I have, I don't have to solder this end, I just have to deal with this end here. Now let me show you what I do with this end. So what I do with these, with the breakout cable is that I wire it up to connectors on a box. This is one I built for my, for my Kenwood TS2000 many, many years ago. This is a 13 pin, uh, I think DIN, it's a little bit larger than that, than that last connector. And I make a box and I put a whole bunch, in, in this case RCA connectors on the front here. And now it makes it real easy to make hook signals in and out of the TS-2000 because all I need is an RCA plug. So here's the uh, uh, drawing of what the, the breakout box is. I show the box with all the connectors. I've labeled them and I've numbered them, 1 through uh, 12 I guess it is. And show the cable goes off to the radio. And here I show the color code, the color of the wire, the pin, and what functions on the wire. Now. You see a lot of pencil marks on here. This is because this cable from MFJ came with a little chart that told what all the colors were. Well, turned out they were all wrong. So um, if you get a color chart, it's worth checking ahead of time. So what you have to do when you get your cable, because it may or may not have a color code to pin chart with it, and even if it does, I would double check it. So you get your ohm meter, and you connect one end to the wire, and the other end lead, you go through all the pins until you see either zero ohms, or if your meter has a continuity tester, you'll hear a beep, and you write all those down. Now you know which pin number goes to which color, because the other end of the wire, you're going to wire up to your jacks. So this is what the inside of the... Um, box for my Kenwood radio looks like. Cable comes in with strain relief, a bunch of connectors, and just basically wire everything over. And what I actually did was on the main audio output, I actually wired that with a jumper to two connectors in case I wanted to use it in two places. You know, maybe for a sound card interface and maybe to feed the input to an audio recorder. So that's kind of handy. So uh, this was just a little uh, box. I put, you know, 12 connectors on there, not knowing just put everything in. If you just want to build a simple one, like say with that six pin cable, you know, that's a good use for the Altoids boxes. You can run the cable in one end and mount some two or three connectors up on the far end and I got yourself a nice little interface box for your radio. So one more thing before I finish this video up, I'm going to tell you where you can buy these cables. 
MFJ sells these cables in different connector types. This table shows 5, 6, 8, 13 pin, microphone, various connectors to bare wires. I had actually had to buy this 6 pin mini DIN cable from MFJ directly as I was able, unable to locate a dealer. I've also found that W5CIA has a eBay store. I know nothing about this. I just happened to find it when I was doing some searching for an alternate source to the MFJ cables. Another alternative for buying these cables is that some of the computer cables, uh, like for a mouse or a keyboard, may use these little mini DINs and maybe like an SVHS cable. Um, so you can try one of those, you know, cut one end off, strip out the wires, buzz it out to make sure there's a wire going to the pins that you need. So that's another source if you dig through your junk box or dig through the boxes at a ham fest, you may find something. Also, if you're not a subscriber of mine, you can press the subscribe button here on the YouTube channel and be notified when I post future videos. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You can follow my ham radio activities on both Twitter at K7AGE and on Google Plus at plus K7AGE. So I hope that uh, is useful information to you when you have to deal with these little tiny DIN and mini DIN high density cables. I don't like soldering to them. I buy the breakout cables. So hopefully next time we'll hook up the mixer. Thanks for watching. Randy, K7AGE.